All right, focus, study guide out. We're going to move pretty quickly. I got a lot of content. I got a lot of videos I do really want to show you. Hey, it's Avery. <laughs> so, friendly reminder that um, your Baron's book is due on March 29th. That's a week from Thursday. This is the seventh edition. I just bought it on Amazon this past week. I've only had two students ask me for a book. So I'm assuming all of you are capable of getting a book. You don't need me to buy it for you. So which means on the 29th, I should have no problem with books in hand. What? No, no, you are grown-ups. You are grown-ups. You're not grown-ups. You're not grown-ups. You guys, I'm 17 years old. I'm 16. I'm legally a minor. Yeah. No, you. If you're able to drive, you can carry a damn book. No, no, no. <laughs> so you need to have your Baron's book in class on the 29th. It needs to be here. Also, I have posted on the front board that did we get here. Where did we? Yeah. The manic. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So, all makeup work is due by Wednesday the 21st. That's this Wednesday at 3 p.m. If you're going to do a golden black card and doing it Wednesday, all of your makeup work needs to be in by tomorrow because I'm not going to sit there and put in makeup work and do a black and gold card for you on Wednesday. That makes logical sense. Can we agree? Yeah. So if you're doing a gold or black card, you need to have your makeup work in by tomorrow. Wednesday, I'm closing grades. So if you're doing gold or black, that will be the time to do it. Baron's book is on the 29th. That's a week from Thursday. Makeup work is due Wednesday, this Wednesday by 3 p.m. Everyone's clear on that, yes? yes? This test that you're taking this week is fourth quarter, friends. It's your first grades coming in for the first fourth quarter. So, all right, let's go. So, mood disorders. So, yesterday, um, not yesterday, Friday, we talked about manic disorder. I showed you my girl who suffers from bipolar disorder. Remember her? Yeah. Okay, the woman, uh, the young lady who, when she has manic disorder, bakes like 15 cakes decorates them and hands them off and all that stuff? No. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, so when we talk about mania, it's not a positive thing, because it sounds like, you know, a really great thing that you can fly, feel like you can do all these crazy different things. It's not a good thing. It's actually uh, very damaging. This is on your focus. It's number six. Okay, psychoanalytic, psychodynamic, it's all six. Every day. I know I hear it. We all hear it. <laughs> the good thing is none of you have to watch it. Except for me. It takes monster bites out of the center of the time. Do you have blood left? Do you have blood left? <laughs> 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 Alright, so here are your causes or uh, why what causes mood disorder. So your first one is so, I would at least take a photo of a tater, I think. Yeah. No, I agree. But it would also be nice to take a photo of it. I see you, Patrick. I'm so glad. Sorry, it's my first day back, too, people. Psychoanalytic disorder believe that my sister has depression because she has problems with authority figures. That my mother upset her so much that she has then taken all of that anger towards my mother and has created depression. What do we think? Maybe, I mean, if you have a really overburdening parent. Oh, you think I have that much of an impact on you? Or are you talking about your mother? You're such a terrible. Well, why don't you report it? We have. Oh, with a new principal? Have you really? With no, a new principal? No, I do with Nelson because I had Nelson. Okay, hi. We don't have Nelson anymore. If you really have a problem with it and you have actual proof, proof and it's not emotional, then say something. You have every right to. I don't have it. What? Oh. Um, it's supposed behavioral twice. Should we just see the same uh, Behavioral is uh, learning and the biological. Oh. All right. Oh yeah, cognitive, just make it cognitive then. So learning links depression to learn helplessness. So the reason why my sister has depression is she's learned, she's always going to have depression, so she doesn't even try, so she just has depression. 
and that everything in her life is hard no matter what she does, so she doesn't need to try. Uh, it's okay. Cognitive sees it as a result of distorted illogical thinking patterns. What do we think of this one? Wait, is learning behavioral? You don't know? What about biological, where disorders uh, affects the function of serotonin, neoprepherine, dopamine? I like that one the best. This is the one I truly believe that my sister suffers from, mostly because she's on an SSRI, which boosts her serotonin, and it helps. So, I personally believe mood disorders are caused by biological. Uh, psychoanalytic, maybe in some cases. Cognitive, I never think. But I like cognitive therapy, and that's next week. Can you believe a week from Thursday we'll be done with content? Oh, it's not that big. Don't even start complaining. That's how big your book is. This is AP Worlds. They chose that. They <laughs> <laughs> chose not to. Avery. I don't want to hear it. Kindness. This is true. I am kind. The same. They chose to take it. Their fault. God, they are really wonderful at times. I'm sure they are. I'm just saying they wish it upon them. I've also broken my soul at times. <laughs> T, you were so spiteful. You were supposed to be relaxed and happy coming back. I'm relaxed and happy. Alright, here we go. This is what we've been waiting for. Schizophrenia, let's go. So, schizophrenia is a severe disorder in which a person suffers from disordered thinking, bizarre behavior, hallucinations, and is unable to distinguish between what is fantasy and what is reality. So, if I told you that I have an alien that uh, I can show you, okay? So, if I had an alien and I brought the alien and it stood right here and you could talk to it, you could touch it, you could see it, you could interact with it. Would you believe that's a genuine alien? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You can touch it, you can see it, you can hear it, you can feel it, you're interacting with it. There's some sort of communication going back and forth. You would absolutely believe it. That's how we test what we, uh, what we believe and what we don't believe. It's if we can see it, we can touch it, we can feel it, all that. When you have schizophrenia, Especially if you have a very severe case. Remember, everything's on a spectrum. Some people have very severe schizophrenia. Some people have mild schizophrenia. People who have schizophrenia can't differentiate between what is real and what is fake because their delusions are they can touch them, they can hear them, they can see them, they can interact with them, and there's a physiological component. So who are you to say they're not experiencing it when they can see it, hear it, touch it, feel it, and interact? That's what makes schizophrenia such a challenge to help overcome over, uh, because they're so physically in tune with what's happening that their brain's created. So what is a psychotic? It is a break away from the ability to perceive what is real and what is fantasy. Now, some schizophrenics are going to be more mild, and with medication, they can differentiate between what is real and what is fake. Have you seen The Hunger Games? You know how in the last film or in the last book, you know, what's the boy's name? Peter. Peter. You're like ready for that. Jeez. Yeah, Peter. He's able to say, oh, well, some memories have a tinge to them. Remember, some of the memories are shiny, and some aren't shiny. The shiny ones have been messed with. Yes, that's how he differentiates in the memories. Spoiler alert. Okay? A psychotic is when you're unable to do that, differentiate between what is real and what is fake, what is real and what is imagined. So people, normal people like you and I, can go through a psychotic break if we're stressed enough, correct? Every once in a while you hear someone who went psychotic and like rammed their car into a crowd of people, yes? Okay? Every once in a while. However, people who are suffering from schizophrenia are dealing with it on a regular basis. So, when we talk about schizophrenia, we use it many terms to describe it. There are three major terms you need to be able to describe all the five types of schizophrenia. Positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and flat effect. These are all in your study guide, by the way. So, positive symptoms. I would like you to know there's nothing good about being schizophrenic. When we talk about positive symptoms, they're in addition to normal personality uh, aspects. It's on your study guide every day. Okay, so positive symptoms are symptoms of schizophrenia that are in excess behavior or occur in addition to normal behavior. So, 
I'm standing here teaching you, if I had schizophrenia, I may have my pet T-Rex sitting behind the desk. I'm able to carry on a conversation with you. I'm able to teach you my content. I also just see my T-Rex Fred hanging out in the back eating his cheeseburgers as he does every day while I'm teaching. Just hanging out back there, okay? And on my way home, me and my uh, T-Rex Fred are going to jump in the Mini Cooper. He's going to stick his head through the, you know, sunroof, and we're going to go, okay? It's in addition to what we consider normal personality. Now, we... When we talk about delusions, delusions are false sense held by a person who refuses to accept evidence of their falseness. Okay, in your application box for delusions, I want you to write nice and big interaction and circle it. When you have a delusion, you're interacting with it. So, with my T-Rex Fred, I interact, so it's a delusion. Every morning, I go outside with a big bowl of meat. My neighbors will see me walk out there with a big bowl of meat, put it down in my front yard. T-Rex Fred is going to come over, start eating the meat, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to pet him. And I'm going to be like, hey, Fred, how was your evening? And we're going to sit there and we're going to talk. I'm going to go inside get dressed, and then I'm going to come back out, and then I'm going to get on Fred, and then we're going to go to school. Okay? That's a delusion because I am physically interacting with Fred. Every morning, I bring a big bowl of meat, put it down, I pet Fred, I ride Fred to school, okay? Interactions. Hallucinations are false sensory perceptions such as hearing voices that may or not exist. Hallucinations is I'm seeing or hearing something, but I'm not physically in interacting with them. For instance, I have a little leprechaun that sits on my laptop, or on my desktop all day long, and he just stares at me. And he just stares at me. And sometimes he gets mad at me, and he sits there and grrrs at me. Grrr. But I don't talk to the leprechaun. I don't interact with the leprechaun. I just see it sitting over there. Like, okay, that's a hallucination. It's there. It exists. I see it. I hear it. But there's no dialogue. There's no communication. There's no interaction. Do you see the difference between the two? Delusions are a lot more intense, correct? Hello? There's an interaction. There's a relationship, there's a give and take, and it's more confirmed than a hallucination. A hallucination, you see it, you hear it, but you can kind of be like, I don't think it's really there. I see the leprechaun staring at me. It's growling at me. Can't you hear it? But I'm going to pretend like it's not there. Maybe it's not there. No one else is seeing it. That's a hallucination. So delusion disorder is when you have multiple delusions happening at the same time. So every morning, I go out and pet my T-Rex Fred, right? Then, um, in the afternoon, I take a spaceship to watch the sunset. I go up into the atmosphere and watch the sunset every single night. I get in my little spaceship, close the door, hit the launch button, and I fly. Have you seen uh, this video where it simulates I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I'll have to look it up. All right. Negative effects. Remember, those are all positive effects. They have no more personalities, and then they have things uh, in addition to that. For instance, we've all, right, Maddie, walked through downtown Tampa, and you've had people come up to you, and you're like, oh my God, there's something wrong with them. Correct? Like just the way they're interacting with you and what they verbalize and stuff like that, yes, okay? That means they have negative symptoms. Doesn't mean the person you interacted with, Maddie, has schizophrenia, right? Is that what you're Googling right now? Yeah. I know, because she's on her phone, and I'm sure I bet she's Googling all the negative symptoms she could possibly find, right? Because you're just so fast. Or are you telling people about this, because you're so excited? It's, like, really exciting. I know, I'm so excited. But if you could, yeah, your like friends don't job. need to know. They can watch my video later. 
Negative symptoms of schizophrenia is when you're like less than normal, they don't speak very well, they're very chaotic, and they're not functioning. Okay? Very poor speech. You're going to meet one today. Her name's Heather. She's definitely negative. All right. So when we talk about schizophrenia, you need to be able to decide right off the bat, is it positive or negative symptoms? But you're going to meet Heather. You're going to be able to tell me exactly right away what she is. And then you need to be able to explain what the difference is between a hallucination and a delusion. More severe have delusions, all have hallucinations. Does that make sense? All right. So, flat effect. Oh, and the flat effect is your lack of emotional response. Okay? Every single person in this room has had a day that has been com completely blah. That's how I describe it in my life, correct? Nothing good happened, nothing bad happened. You just kind of went through the day kind of numb. Yes? Hello? Yes. Okay, good. Because that's normal for every once in a while you go through a day. Nico, you better pick your head up right now. So, uh, flat effect is that experience all the time, every single day, for weeks or months on end. Okay? How awful would that be? Can we agree? Very challenging. All right. So, that is how we describe schizophrenia. Now, here are the first types of schizophrenia. Well, the first type of actual schizophrenia is... Uh, disorganized schizophrenia it happens to also be the most common types of schizophrenia. And it's disorganized, which means behavior is bizarre and childish in thinking and in speech. Motor actions are very disordered. They're all over the place. And you're going to meet Heather here in a second, and she will be a good example for you to write down about. <clears throat> Like what part of school? No, I hated high school. If you told me I was going to be a high school history teacher when I was in high school, I would have kicked you and spit in your what did face. You want to do? Anything but be my mother. <laughs> and here I am, my mother. No, I always knew I was going to be a teacher. I just didn't want to be a teacher until I was like, "Damn, I'm going to be a teacher." Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So I would write down some things about uh, my girl Heather. You're gonna meet here in a second. See Heather? Here we go. What do you do? What do you do? Is that I have a monopoly over the coffee industry? Positive or negative symptoms? <laughs> Hello, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Why is it negative, Christina? Uh, because her speech is slurred. Oh, yeah, it's all over the place, correct? You're like, what the hell? Once you start listening to her, the cadence, it'll be easier, but yeah, she's definitely negative. Okay, so that's the problem, isn't it? That's the complaint, right? Well, uh, I have kryptonite in me. You know what that is, don't you? Kryptonite? Kryptonite. And, uh... So if I have kryptonite in me, I drink coffee and soda. And no one else knows what to eat. I mean, do they have eggs? Do they have eggs? Do eat raw eggs. When I was pregnant, I think boys get pregnant and girls don't. Oh, but I eat raw eggs, but, uh... Do you eat raw eggs? Do you see how she's well, all over what the place? Eating, Disorganized. Yeah, the, is that the problem, big problem? Do you know what to keep it saying, boy? Is that, is that a complaint? No? Okay. Hmm? My daughter now is in a state hospital. We, like most families, have run out of funds after years of seeking help in all the private facilities. And there certainly is a vast difference between the private facility and the state hospital. These are not hospitals. These are institutions, some of them very much like prisons. When it comes time to take her back to the hospital, uh, she's, you know, reluctant to go back. 
And then I say to myself, is it possible? Is it possible that I could keep her home? Turn up shopping. Yeah. And then, then I. What kind, what kind of shopping? Harnock shopping. What is that? I don't want plants. I eat it all off. Oh. Oh, Heather, I, is it a soap? Huh? Is Harnock a soap? Harnock is a soap. Yeah. Oh, and you want to go, you want to buy some? Yeah. Is it a special kind of soap? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll stop on the way. You want to stop and get them? We're not going back. Heather, we have to go back. You know that. What are you I do nothing. Believe me, I do nothing. Okay? You mean you do nothing where, Heather? Yeah, I do nothing. I don't care. I do nothing. Well, Heather, we're going to have to go back. You know that. No, no, no. Well, we don't have to go back right away. But you're not rough with me. Wait till they come here with the straight jackets, okay? No, Heather, they're not going to do that. But they don't do that. They don't have to go back. Well, Mrs. Deloitte and Mrs. Barnes told me in the morning that I am not welcome back. She said, we're coming after you. They said that. Well, they shouldn't come after you. We're not going to have them come I do nothing, and that's why I want to do nothing. I know, Heather, but we do have to go back so that you can come here again and stay longer and stay overnight. You know that, Heather. We're going to have to leave, and then you'll come home again, Heather. We're not going to Washington. Well, we're just waiting for the paperwork. Did you ever have a complex? Uh, a president was not that complex. I mean, you're retarded. You know, I'm retarded. You know, this side, didn't you? You see how she's all over the place? You know, yeah, I'm retarded. Right? I'm an idiot, a moron. You're not, Heather. You're none of those things, Heather. You're not I'm a boss. Things. I'm a boss. I'm an orderer, a dictator, you know? You're not retarded. Do, do I, could you buy a pound of on the web? We have to go back to Manhattan today. Where do you live in Manhattan? Central Park West. Central Park. Near the Samaritz? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you have a word, dress? Oh. Katie Bell was a family father of mine. Listen. Mm-hmm. The boys dresses. Imagine having a child suffering with this, as severe as she is. I mean, look at her parents. I mean, it's so hard. As disorganized schizophrenia. What do you think? Yes, she does smoke. Uh, she is an adult, but you're not allowed to drink alcohol in government buildings, including hospitals. So the only type of drugs she can get access to, or anyone, is cigarettes. And they can't stop her from having cigarettes because she is over the age of 18. Does that make sense, Nika? What do you got? So then she's suffering from a delusion. She was talking in the first part, and it didn't seem like she was talking to anyone. She, she was talking to the camera about like her kryptonite and stuff like that. Like oh, she okay. was. So she has some delusional components, I would think. However, I wouldn't say she's living in a delusional world. No. I have someone who's very clearly delusional. Does that make sense? They have uh, delusions of grandeur, which means they believe. I think that guy believes he's Jesus. Oh. And another one coming up. All right, so your next one is catatonic schizophrenia. Now, catatonic schizophrenia, I think, is absolutely fascinating. But the fact is that um, this one, they kind of freeze like sculptures and can be, like, modeled. Uh, They go into the immobility, and then they have occasional bursts of, like, energetic movements and stuff like that. How much time do I have? Comments, what? Um, for what, catatonic? Um, I would say it's pretty much limited. Okay. You're just not moving, and when you see it, you'll be able to. Can I go? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 
Steve Cook. Sharks are second. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand out, but I don't want you to shake it. Okay, okay. Okay, so you can have that. We're going to remain for a sustained period. I'm just going to move your arms gently. that you feel that there's something not quite right. You're having some difficulty explaining that. The patient in this clinic is displaying opposition, resisting all attempts. Okay, resistance move. So this one is a lot more of a physical issue. Interesting, right? Like the whole position is yeah. for like three, four, or five hours at a time. Like, you can just, like, place them like this, and they will stay like that. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. All right. Then you have paranoid schizophrenia, which is the one you guys care the most about, yes? I have a couple videos for this. How much time do I have, do you think? Like a minute? Two minutes? Okay, so we'll just write it down. All right, so paranoid schizophrenia is a type of schizophrenia in which the person suffers from delusions of persecution. What is a delusion of persecution? You can give, raise your hand and tell me what that is. No, we don't know what that is. If we could use our context clues. Maddie! Well, someone's coming after them, so trying to get them. Yeah, someone's trying to kill you. Have you, um, that the government's trying to get you? Yes? There's cameras in your phones. There's cameras everywhere trying to... I get you, the police are trying to kill you, all those different types of things. Um, a per, uh, delusions of grandeur means you're a person of great significance when you're not. Like, you are the President of the United States when you are definitely not Donald Trump. Um, you are Jesus. I have an example of here in a second. Some guy thinks he's Jesus and walks around trying to be Jesus, which isn't the worst thing, you know? Like, Jesus was a pretty cool guy in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I would hate to meet a guy who thinks he's Stalin. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be pretty... There would be a lot of problems. And a lot of death. He needs to be in charge of a large nation. <laughs> uh, jealousy, of course, and together with hallucinations that are supporting all this. Tomorrow you have 11 through 20. Apparently some of us studied for that today. No one, can, no one is as good at tracing these movies as Stalin. Are we done? How much time do I have? Video two minutes? No. All right. Undifferentiate. Let's go. Let's keep going. Because uh, you're going to want more video time tomorrow. Right? Yes. Yes. I have two minutes. The more I get done today, writing means the more videos I can show you tomorrow. So undifferentiated is the type of skinny schizophrenia that shows the person with no particular pattern shifting from one pattern or another, and it cannot be characterized as disorganized, paranoid, or catatonic. They are just so far out there, we don't know. This is your smallest section, undifferentiated. Yeah, I don't think it's That's fine. So residual is, of schizophrenia means that there is no delusion that they have no hallucinations, that they don't experience that. However, they have negative uh, thoughts, poor language skills, and odd behavior. So the causes of schizophrenia, which you're going to want to write down. First one is psychoanalytic. Isn't this on your study guide, mm -hmm. Nancy? On your yeah. focus? It's on your study guide. Perfect. Oh, perfect. That way you can just fill it in right all right, so psychoanalytic believes that schizophrenia is caused by a severe breakdown of the ego. Who created the ego? Freud. Freud, thank you, Ella, the only one who knew. Uh, which has become overwhelmed by the demands of the id and results in childish, infantile behavior. So, when you have 
a uh, person who acts like Heather, for instance, they're going to say her ego has been destroyed. How, it, how she's able to compensate and deal. Behaviorists are going to for, uh, focus on, of course, reinforcement and that um, they've watched behavior where people acted like schizophrenics, which is why um, they're following that behavior. By the way, Marilyn Monroe's mother was schizophrenic, which is why uh, Marilyn Monroe was a weirdo. Very talented actress, I guess. I mean, you can't help. If you, have you actually ever seen her in a movie? You should. She's actually, like, you can't help but watch her. Like, she's really incredible. She's just a complete weirdo. Um, while filming, she could only do, uh, like, in, like, 20 minutes worth of work at a time. She'd be super late, super behind, all this stuff. And um, if you're a behaviorist, you'd believe because watching her mother has taught her to behave that way. Goodbye.